it's Jackie from 35th Avenue Sewing Back, and we are day six with our Sewing Machine Expo. It has been a blast. We have had fun. We had some great guests. It's just been so, so wonderful. And of course, we have some really good machine specials. And what we have decided, because we started with Juki way back when, it's been a couple weeks, and Bernina and Foth and Viking, we have extended all the sales through next week till next weekend. So just the heads up, Baby Lock, we'll have specials on Baby Locks now, and we'll have all our other ones. We have extended the prices through next week. So you have all week to shop. And later today, you'll be able to watch these videos on our website. At um, Watch the videos. You can go to our website, and then down below, you can watch individ individual um, videos on every day we did um, a sewing, um, basically like a machine expo. So click on that. That's great. Um, let's see what other things. So today, you can... Um, We'll put up our slide because we have a number. So today, if you have questions or there's some prices that we can't show today because Babylock does not allow me to show them. So you can call this one 242 6282 and hit extension 3. And with that, you'll be able to get prices and um, ask questions. Just a heads up, if you leave a message, make sure you leave a message what you're looking for, what you're looking to trade in, um, kind of what sewing and quilting or embroidery you do, so we know when we call you what we're expecting, you know, what we have the best price for you and all that. So, again, one 242 6282 and extension 3. And, of course, if you are in the Phoenix area or the Chandler, El Mirage, Sun City, you know, Amatuki, wherever you want to be, you can come actually into any of our locations and get these great deals. So... Don't forget that. We have the three main locations. One's in Phoenix, Chandler, and El Mirage. So they are ready to help you answer any questions and give you the best price we have for our machine expo. So a couple little things. I am very, very excited to have this guest. She's not here locally, but she is here virtually. I guess that's what it is. She's here virtually <laughs> on it. And I'd like to introduce Missy B. Um, she is in her home in Florida, so let's go live to Missy and say hi to her. There she is. <laughs> hi, Missy. Hey, everybody. How <laughs> is everybody doing today? I am so excited to be here. Thank you for showing, showing up in your home. <laughs> I know, right? It's like if they watch me on video, it's like I'm in my home studio for a change. <laughs> exactly. Yay. We're so excited. I am missing not being there, though. Yes. I miss having you here. But I do have a great educator, Phyllis. She won't come on camera, <laughs> but she is a great educator. So you can come into our little um, event center and get demos and stuff and meet Phyllis and everything. Um, we're here till 2 o'clock today, and we are here all day tomorrow. Even though we're talking about embroidery today and serging, we'll be talking about quilting tomorrow. So if you want to come in, get a demo, and see Phyllis, our Baby Lock educator, you're more than welcome to stop into our um, event center. So so I guess you're going to show some really neat things on the Solaris today, Missy. I am. I'm trying to get my phone up so I can see if there's any comments and questions as I'm going. Oh, okay. But yeah, so my job is to show off the Solaris and the Triumph a little bit today. So I'm super excited. Two of my most favorite machines. Ready to get started? Not on. There I am. I am. I just didn't hear myself. <laughs> Kind of weird. <laughs> Are you ready to get started? Did you get your phone? Ready? I'm ready to get started. I am. I'm ready to get started. Technology is amazing, right? You're I know. In Arizona, I'm in I feel. I feel like you're just in right next to me. <laughs> I know. I was just. I was just there a few months ago. Maybe I'll be back again next this end of this year. Mm, mm, just saying. Yeah. It's a big secret. No. <laughs> we hope so. On it. So hope let's so. get let's get started on the Solaris. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Jackie. All right, good afternoon, everybody. It is a um, not so sunny day here in Florida, but I'm super excited to be here to talk to you about this Baby Lock Solaris. And at the end, after Jackie talks to you for a few minutes, I'll be able to show you some about the Baby Lock Triumph. 
And um, I think you're going to love it if you've never touched a Solaris or a Baby Lock machine. I'm going to show you some of the things that make it so easy to use because they are my favorite machines. Now, I'm an educator with Baby Lock, and I've been with Baby Lock a little over 17 years now on the education team. And I travel all over the country. I've been to Jackie's store many times, and I love coming there um, to teach with her and her great staff. So, and I love their great new event center. If you've never been to Phoenix, if you're ever in the area, be sure and check it out because I know I shared this into my group. So I may have some extra people coming in as well. But we're going to get to show you the Solaris. It is the top of the line from Baby Lock, and it is an amazing machine. It is a sewing and embroidery combination machine. And so it, it does beautiful embroidery stitches, but it's a great sewing machine as well. It has some great features in it. We have a camera. We have a projector. We have um, digitizing on the screen with the IQ designer. So there's a lot of really great things you can do with it. So I'm going to turn my camera around. And we're going to go to the machine and I'm going to show you some of the great fun features. I'm going to show you some cool um, designs that are built into the machine and some fun things that you can do with it. Okay, so we're going to get started. All right, so I'm going to turn the camera around. So give me just a second. I'm going to turn this off so you're not seeing me for a second. I'm going to turn the screen. You're going to see me again. I'm going to switch it around. Hopefully, oh my gosh, this I didn't practice before we came live. Hopefully I can turn my camera around. Hang on just a second. I'm looking for the button. Oh, Jackie, I should have practiced this part. Nope, that's not it. Okay, well, we're going to turn the whole screen around just like this. So now you'll be able to see it. Hopefully the machine is not backwards. And we're going to see how this works. All right, I think I got you pretty much on the screen. Okay, perfect. Technology is amazing, but oh my goodness, some things you just got to practice if you haven't tried it before. So, all right, so on the Solaris, you see this big, beautiful screen. It's about the size of an iPad, you guys. It's so big and so beautiful. It has all the beautiful colors on it. And we have our sewing, our embroidery, our IQ designer. And so as we move in just a little bit more, there you go. Perfect. Okay, so we have sewing embroidery at IQ Designer, and underneath sewing, of course, that's where all of your sewing stitches are going to be, and there's a lot, a lot of beautiful sewing decorative stitches, straight stitches, it does a beautiful stitch. You also have the ability to use the projector in the sewing function, so that is pretty amazing. But we're going to touch on embroidery as well, so let's touch embroidery. And you can see it's very touch sensitive, very touch friendly. So when you select your design just by the simple touch of your finger, there's also a stylus you can use. So this is the stylus that comes with it. You could use this to touch on your screen. But I just, I don't always have my stylus with me, but you know what? I've always got my hand with me. So I tend to use my hand more often. But then you can touch and select the designs. Um, this is one of my favorites, this beautiful wolf. But you can see down here at the bottom that you can actually scroll up and select your design. So if I scroll up, it'll scroll to the next page and so forth. I can also touch this arrow over on the right, and it's going to expand my screen. So now I can scroll back down and see more designs on my screen at one time, which is, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna, I've already selected the wolf. I'm going to touch the arrow on the right to drop it back down. So there's the wolf, and the reason I chose this wolf is because I actually have been stitched out on a beautiful um, faux leather jacket, and I want to be able to show that to you here in just a minute. So we'll go ahead and touch set, and you can see it's a great big design. It's seven and three quarters by almost 11 and three quarters, so it's a big, beautiful design. It's got a lot of detailing in it, and this design I actually stitched out with a metallic thread, and it really did a beautiful job. So I'm going to pull it in for a second and show you. So here is this wolf, and like I said, it's on a faux leather jacket with a metallic thread, and it just really did a beautiful job. Now, I intended to go in and add some sparkles, some hot fix crystals to it to add a little bit of embellishment, but that has yet to happen because I've been traveling in my trunk show for um, a couple years now. So you know how that happens when you have good intentions and you just aren't able to get it all finished. That is what has happened with the wolf, but he's got some great potential to add designs wherever. Okay, so underneath the edit icon on the right hand side, 
you have lots of options. You have your size, your move, your rotate, your mirror imaging, your applique feature, your stippling, your um, applique outline. So if I were to select the stippling, because the Solaris actually has built-in stippling where you can add stippling around any design. But now with the Solaris 2, when I select the stipple, it's going to bring up the screen. And on the screen, now you can see that it's added beautiful stippling around my design. Now, I will tell you, this is some of the most beautiful stippling out there in any software, any machine, anywhere, because it has those nice, pretty curves, and you can actually adjust the distance between the edge of the stippling and the design. You can adjust the spacing, which adjusts the size of the stippling. So if I wanted to bump it up a little bit, it would make this, this stippling even bigger on the screen. And you can go up to about a half inch stipple all the way down to like a less than a quarter of an inch stipple, so really small. You could also change the size of the hoop you're working within. Now I know with this particular design, I am limited to my hoop size because it does require some of the larger hoops. So I can't use a four by four on this design, of course, but I could most certainly fill up that 10 and 5 eighths by 16 inch hoop. And y'all, that is a monster size hoop. I'll show you here in just a minute the actual hoop on top of my head. And you'll see it's a monster size hoop. It's great for those big, beautiful designs. It's great for big in the hoop projects. You name it. We love the big hoops. So up at the top, so this is where we have our stippling. So I've selected the stippling in the original. That's by default. I could also select an echo quilting. So if you're a quilter and you love to quilt your quilts, but maybe you're not very good at free motion quilting, you could actually put your embroidery design in here and add echo quilting all around it. And the echo quilting is just going to follow the outline of the pattern that you're using to give that ripple effect to your stitching. You also have the ability to adjust your distance, your spacing, so you could space them farther apart or closer together. And then the last one, this came in with the new Solaris 2. If you'll select the third icon across the top, that third icon is going to give me the option to um, change to a different fill pattern, which in the Solaris 2, I believe there's like 42 or so different fill patterns built in that you can add to your, your designs. Let me see if I can scoot you in just a little bit more. There we go. So when I select a different fill pattern, it's going to put, like this one has put leaves around the wolf. I could come in here, touch select, touch select. It's taking me just a minute. So then I could scroll down and look at all the different fill patterns in it. So we're looking at a wolf. So see, here's 42 fill patterns. So maybe we want the wolf to be looking through some leaves. So we'll select the leaves, and we'll touch OK. And so now when it comes in, you see the wolf. He's kind of hiding in the leaves. So you could also adjust the distance on here, which is how close it stitches to your design and the size of the leaves themselves. OK, so if I just want to make them bigger, that's up to about 180%, which is going to make them really big. And see, it, it, some parts don't even look like leaves, or you can make it really small. And it's going to put them in a, a, big, a big thicket of leaves right there. So lots of fun things that you can do right here on the embroidery screen. Now, what I think would be fun to do is once you have this stitched out, then you could take some colored pencils, colored markers, and kind of color in different areas of the leaves to add a little bit different color to the design. So maybe stitch this out in like um, a white fabric with black threads. Then you have a coloring book where you could come in and color in different areas to add different, you know, looks and textures to your design. So this is one of my favorite things of the Solaris is the ability to add in these decorative fill patterns right here in IQ Designer. I mean, actually right here in embroidery. We can even do more in IQ Designer. Okay, so if we go ahead and touch embroidery, embroidery is going to take us to our main screen for embroidering. It's going to show me that across the top is my color bar or my progress bar. So the black is the first color of the wolf. And then my, my decorative fill pattern is going to be this last color over here on the right. So basically tells me I have two colors. And when I touch layout, I could um, add a basting frame. I could uh, choose to a monochromatic. So if I touch this little sil single spool right here, 
Now it's going to stitch everything on the screen in one color without stopping. So it would stitch the entire design until it's finished without stopping. So that's a cool thing about that. Then we also have a color sort if you have multiple designs where you need to, you want to stitch maybe all the reds first, then all the whites. Maybe you have patriotic ribbons or something on, on the screen, and or maybe even breast cancer ribbon. Any kind of designs. doesn't have to be ribbons. That's just one I use, for example, because normally they're smaller designs and you can fit a lot of them on the screen. But you could stitch out all of one certain color and then move on to the next. And so that's with the um, the color sorting. But it's a lot of great fun things that you can do with this. We also have the projector up here at the top. And so with the projector, what it does, I'm going to slide my hoop on. Now, I, did, I didn't get fabric in my hoop, but I think you'll still be able to see it. Okay. So I'm going to slide my hoop on. I'm going to touch OK. And then I'm going to touch the projector. Okay. So when I touch the projector, it's actually going to project the image of my design down onto the bed of my machine. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide in a piece of stabilizer. I'm going to turn off some lights here. I'm actually going to go up to the settings page here. Let me change my background color, see if that helps. Because it's kind of, there we are. I'm going to bring you over to the screen, to the bed of the machine. And hopefully you can kind of see that. So see the wolf right here? The wolf is actually showing, so it's showing that part of the design, so it gives me a more detailed view. What is great about this, let me change to one more color, see if it makes it a little bit better even. Yeah, see there's a white background. So I just added some stabilizer on top of my hoop so you wouldn't be looking at the bed of my machine. But what is great about this is when you're trying to place a design, when you place a design, you could actually pinpoint it on a specific area of a piece of fabric. Now this particular design I can't move around because honestly it fills my entire screen, but you're not always going to have designs that fill your entire screen and you can actually move them around and place them wherever you want with the projector because it projects an image of your design onto your fabric, which I think is pretty amazing for, the, I mean the technology nowadays is awesome. So you have the ability to project your image. You also have the option to scan your fabric. So we still have the camera built in with the Solaris. You, um, on some of the other machines that I know that Jackie's going to talk about, you have an app that you can use to bring in images. But with this one, we do still have the camera, which is pretty cool. You, it'll scan your fabric and you can place the design exactly where you want it as well. So great for placing your designs, great for giving you visibility. Now then, you do see like a three by five area, which is not a huge area, but it is just enough. If you want to move to a different part of the design and see what it, if it's lined up on a, the side or the top or the bottom and so forth, if you'll touch on the screen, let me bring you back over this way. If you touch on the screen, there's a red box right here in the middle. So I'm going to move that red box down. So now it's going to show me just the tip of his nose down to his beard. If I needed to move the design itself around, there's arrows over here on the right side where I could move the design itself. So the red box in the middle is for moving the projected image. The little arrows over here on the side are for moving the actual design. So let me bring you back over into the design area. And now hopefully you can see that there's just the part of his nose. You could move it to the bottom part of the hoop, wherever you wanted to see what part you were stitching, you could move the projector to that area, which like I said, that's pretty awesome for now for technology. Love, love, love that. So if you have any questions, um, pop them in the, in the text box because they're answering questions. And I'm trying to keep an eye on them myself as well. So, but that is just some of the, the cool things that you can do with a Solaris using the projector. Let me come back to the screen. There we go. We'll touch OK. We're going to touch Home and go back to the beginning. Clear out that. We'll go back to Embroidery. Now you have um, your exclusive design categories in this category. Expand that. You have several categories across the top. You have Coastal, you have Delicate, Floral, Heirloom, Heritage, Home Accents, Monograms, Novelty, Ocean Life, Quilting, Celebrities, and Vintage. Like I said, tons of designs built into here. Let's peek at the novelty. You'll see lots of different ones. There's some guitars. There's some sugar skulls. There's some sun and moons. Look, sewing stuff. 
There's a little a spool of thread, a, a tape measure, a little dress form, fun designs built into the Solaris. Okay, we look into quilting. These are like quilting motifs if you wanted to add a quilting motif to your project. So lots of great designs built in. Home accents. Wake up and smell the coffee. Yes, indeed. I don't drink coffee, but I know some who do, and that is like their get them going in the morning. All right, so we'll touch return. Then you have your second category, your second tab, which in the Solaris 2, there's now three categories of designs. And these are kind of the generic designs that are shared with other machines. So in the tab number three is the newer designs. And lots of pretty ones. Lemons, super cute for the kitchen. There's some Christmassy ones. There's some um, little butterflies for quilting. There's a cute little elephant and a toucan and flamingos. Flamingos are right at my alley because I live in Florida, right? Lots of pretty feathers for quilting. And I love these. Some of these can be used with the new, um, the new quilt, board, quilt sashings that we have in here because they're designed to be used with hexagon designs. And there's also, in case you weren't aware, but there's also a couple of edge-to-edge -edge type quilting designs. So under tab number three, design number 45 and 50, I mean 49 and 50, let me select 50. I'll drop the arrow back down and look how cute that is. That's a little sewing motif edge to edge quilting design. So you'd be able to line it up with the little dots on the side where the, st where the stitches end. And then you would be able to connect them to quilt that into a really super cute pattern. So lots of really fun designs built in. So we'll touch return. Then we're going to look at our text. Okay. And the text is, has some great features. Let me see if I can get you back just a little bit. There we go. So within the text, we have the exclusive script, which is a script that's been built into the Baby Lock machines for several years now. And so when we scroll up, I'm going to choose one of my favorite fonts, which is number 17. So when you select that, you can type in whatever text you want. I'm going to actually type in 35th, so 35th. And then when I hit over on the right hand side, when I select the arrow down button, that's your return key, kind of like your old school typewriters where you could touch the return button and come to the side. So now I'm going to put in AVE. And then I'm going to hit return again and touch SOS, 35th Avenue SOS. Okay, but what if I had, instead of touching SOS, what if I had touched the T instead? You can see that I can very simply touch delete and it's going to back up. But what if I had wanted to make that a capital A? So let's put my S in for the SOS, and we're going to use our arrow back over here on the right hand side, arrow back, and I'm going to delete, and now I can type in a capital A, 35th Avenue SOS. So I don't have to go and restart my whole string of text. I can actually back up in my text box and fix that one particular letter and make it so it's what I want it to be. Okay, then when we touch set, and that's ready to stitch. And now you could actually touch and move it wherever you wanted it to, to stitch on your design. If I had multiple designs on there, I could move it in to stitch it wherever I wanted to. The colors on the right hand side, if you want to see what something's going to look like as a different color. So you can see that 35th has one, two, three, four colors but that's because it sees every letter as an individual color. So maybe we want the avenue to be different colors. So we're going to select the first one, and then we can change it to pink, maybe. We'll do the next one, change it to pink. So now you've got 35th in black, avenue in pink, and so's in black again. So you could very easily change your colors that way. In the color palette down below, there are loads of different color brands that you can choose from. There's Madeira, there's Sulky, Robeson Anton, Isacord, Guterman, um, Polyfast, Iris, Floriani, just your basic embroidery colors. Most of the time, mine is set on my basic embroidery colors, but you could change it however. Okay. Also, this color visualizer, when I select the color visualizer, oh, touch OK, and then we're going to go back to Edit touch our color palette. Now we'll select color visualizer. Or it may not be letting me do it because I need to ungroup it. And it may just not want to play with the text this way. 
There we go. Now we can. So now what it's going to do, if I touch random, and we're just going to pick some random colors, manual, random colors, scroll up. And sometimes it's just about pushing buttons and playing. Let's go back up to another color. There's a blue. Touch OK. So now then you can see it's going to randomize those colors within that. So if you want to change and play with your colors, if you're one who likes to play with all the colors in the crayon box like I do, you can change and pick your own color. So maybe I like this one here. So we'll touch set. And now it's actually changed that to the colors I want. So I could go to the next one and do the same thing. Here's the cool thing though. If I bring in a design, we're going to touch add, uh, add. We'll go in and choose a little set of uh, designs. Uh, let's choose the lemons because we know lemons are yellow and this will be a good thing to show you because you'll be able to see the colors. We bring it to the top. Now if I go in to change my colors, I've got the lemons selected. I'm going to touch edit color visualizer and let's go back to random. So random has all of my colors that I selected before. I don't want that. I want to select my lemons. Cancel, touch lemons, touch OK, touch lemons. There you go, lemons selected. Now we go. All right, let me go down here then. Select my lemons. All right, we're going to make this the easy way. I'm going to delete the letters. So I have just the lemons on the screen. You know, if something doesn't act right when you're trying to do it on camera, you just get rid of the part that's giving you problems and then you start over. Okay. So right now we're going to go to the lemons, color visualizer, random, touch OK. And now you can see how it changes up the colors of your lemons. So if you find one that you like, now they kind of look like plums, right? So if I like that one, I could heart that one to save it. When I touch refresh, which is at the very bottom of the screen, you might not be able to see it, the very bottom right hand side, if I touch refresh, now it gives me more options. So I could pick and choose the ones that I like. And then when I wanna see the ones that I like, if I touch favorites, it's gonna show me the three that I chose. So I could pick and choose from those particular ones that I want to, that I want to stitch out. So if I like, um, this one with the yellow leaves. We're going to touch set. And now my design has been changed to have the yellow leaves. Okay. So lots of fun things that you can do right here in, um, in the embroidery side of the Solaris. Okay. So I'm going to touch the home icon. And hopefully this has given you some fun ideas. So I'm going to choose, um, go back to embroidery. We're going to choose a font. And I'm going to choose, actually, let me go to the big fonts. So tab number four is our great big fonts. So these are like uh, almost a five by seven font for some of them. If you scroll down on this one, this floral is one of my favorites. But if you scroll down, there's actually a second set of the same letters. And they're only about two, two and a half inches tall. So I love using them when I need just a small monogram on something. But for this, I'm going to actually come in here and choose uh, font number three. And we're going to choose the B for baby lock. We'll touch set. And so now then with this design, this is a lot of stitches, y'all. The green alone is like 30 minutes to stitch, which, you know, isn't bad depending on the project. But if you wanted to turn this into an applique or just use the outline of it, you could choose edit. And go over here at right hand side. Last little icon down is a little flower. So touch the flower. And that little flower is going to give you an outline of the outer part of the letter. Now then with the newest upgrade, which is the Solaris 2, you can actually turn on the inside. So the outline, I'm going to make it a little bit wider so you can see what it did. So I'm adjusting the distance. And the distance, distance is going to be how close it is to that outer edge of the design. So hopefully you can see that it's a little bit out from the outer edge. But when I turn the inside on, now what it's going to do is it's going to adjust the inside so you have an outline around the inside as well. Because what happens is if this letter were open and you, the outline could sneak up into an area and get to the middle, it would fill it in. But if it didn't on machines past and other machines, you would actually have to draw that shape in there to be able to 
work around it if it were a closed letter like this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and touch memory. I like it just like it is. We're going to touch memory. And after I touch memory, at the bottom of the screen, it's telling me, oops, there we go, that it's recall from IQ Designer stamp pattern list. So we'll touch OK. Then we'll touch embroidery. And you can see up here, 26,000 stitches. It's going to take 43 minutes for that one letter to stitch. Which, you know, depending on what you're putting on, it isn't bad. But if you can turn it into an applique, that's going to save all of your, that's going to save a ton of time just by turning this into an applique. So we'll touch return. And we'll go ahead and touch um, the home key in the top right hand corner. And touch OK. So that's a lot to do with just your regular embroidery. Now we're going to work in IQ Designer just a little bitty bit and show you some fun things in there. Okay, so IQ Designer is the design side of the Solaris, and it's where you can scan in images. So if you wanted to scan in some artwork, like I have this cute little flower I used in the class a little while back. I used this cute little flower to scan it in and turn it into an applique design or stitches. So you could scan in your own artwork, you could scan in um, recipes, you can scan in all kinds of fun stuff. Okay. Just, of course, always be considerate of copyright laws, but you can scan in all kinds of stuff. So in IQ Designer, as I said, this is the design side of the machine. So on the right-hand side, you're going to have all of your tools. So if you're familiar with digitizing software, that's kind of what this is built into the machine. Okay. So on the right-hand side at the top, we have our outline tools. So this one looks like a zigzag. That's your line tools. The next one down has a little red box, a red box next to it. That is your fill pattern, okay? So your outlines, of course, are the outlines around a design. The fill pattern, of course, is what fills in a design, all right? So I want to bring in that letter B because I used it for a reason, right? things is if you wanted to just fill your screen with stipple or decorative stitches all you have to do is choose this fill pattern right here choose the fill box you could change your color if you like choose stippling if you want to have a whole hoop full of stippling touch stippling pick a color touch okay right here this is the main difference there's a paint brush and when you touch the paint brush you can see I have to fill in the screen right that takes way too much time, so I'm going to click undo, undo twice, and if I choose the bucket, which is next to the brush, choose the bucket, touch on your screen, you now have a screen full of stippling. So when I go to next, it's going to actually take this into IQ Designer editing, so you can actually change the length of your stitch, the spacing, the distance, and you could actually change it to a single run leave it as a single run or a triple run, okay? So you can make all those adjustments and then take it into embroidery by touching set. Now then, as I said earlier, this will go up to like a half inch. So if you want a really big stippling, you can change your size, touch okay. And the size is the spacing. So see that gives you a really big stipple stitch, which is beautiful, would be great for some quilts. And the nice thing about this stippling it doesn't have, you can't see where it ends. Like there's, you know, the threads are going to connect in here somewhere. And if I touch my hoop in the top right hand corner, I can actually touch the playback and watch it stitch. So I can see where it's going to connect. But visually, it doesn't look like there's not a stop anywhere. So you could actually hoop this multiple times and stitch, you know, your, your quilt or your jacket or your purse or whatever. So you can rehoop it multiple times that way. And the stippling is really one of the only ones you can do that way because it really has no defined edges like your fill patterns do. So we'll touch close and touch return. Now we're going to fill that same design with a, a fill pattern. And then we're going to move into why I saved that letter B. So we're going to change the color just for kicks. We're going to scroll down. This one's one of my favorites. It's um, the feathers that were built into the last um, into one of the upgrades for the other machines but then this one is built in for the Solaris so we have the feathers we also have cute little circles so I'm going to choose the feathers 
and we touch OK. And when I touch the screen, because I still have my fill bucket selected, it's going to overwrite that um, stipple that was built, that was showing on the screen. So then we'll touch Next. And you still have the same options of changing your size and your spacing and all of that with your decorative fill patterns, but you have more options. So um, if you missed this video, I know they said they were going to put it up on their website and you should be able to come back to the Facebook Live and watch it again as well. So if you need to kind of rewind me and slow it down and watch it again, you'll be able to do that because I know I talk a little fast sometimes, but I have a lot to get in. So over here on the right hand side, you have your sizing. So you could up the sizing to 200%, bring it down to 50%. So really big or really small. You have your angle of your stitches. You have what is an outline on or off button. And what this does, if you have your outline turned on, some of the machines by default, the outline is on. Um, with a Solaris, the, out, the outline default is now set to off. And what this is, it's an outline that goes around the outer perimeter of the design or the inner perimeter. If you have something in the middle that kind of connects all of the dots so there's no jump stitches, but it also gives you a very defined line where your design is stitched. And I'll show you a sample here in just a minute and it'll make a little bit more sense why you might want that outline turned off at times. Okay, so we're going to leave it turned off. Then you have your random shift and what the random shift is, it kind of sends the design through a swirl and kind of twists and turns and misshapens it and it can give some really cool effects. So the random shift is one to play with. So when you select one, you get three more options down here. You have type A, type B, and type C for your random shift. So you kind of play with those and see if you like any of them. Okay. That one I did change just a little bit. You might not be able to see that it changed. And you can kind of stretch it out up here a little bit, but not bad. This next one, like this design here has a defined center. You can see that that little swirl right there is probably the center of that motif. So if I do a stick, select the position offset, I'm going to raise it up. Now watch, see that little center there? Now watch where it goes. See, it moved up just a little bitty bit. So it will offset the center of your design because there may be times where you want the design to be centered within a particular area. So you could actually move the center of it around. Okay. And then the last one is your thickness. You can have it run the triple run that it always runs by default, or you could change it so it has a single run. Just depends on the type of look you're after in your designs. Okay. So great fun things you can do with the fill patterns. Now the fill patterns are definitely more tricky to line up from side to side. They're not going to match identically like a stippling. You wouldn't be able to see that it'd be a very seamless join. But if you make your fill pattern smaller, so you have a little bit of wiggle room in your hoop, then you could make it so it is that it joins pretty well, but you're never going to be able to connect like that pedal is not going to connect with this pedal over here. So Think about it like that. That's not going to happen. It will on the stippling because the stippling has finished edges where the fill patterns don't. Okay. So we're going to touch all clear and we're going to go into our shapes, which over here on the right hand side is our shapes menu. It looks like a square and a circle stacked together. And within this, you're going to have 30 of these original shapes. The second tab across the top is 30 more closed shapes. Then you have 30 open shapes, which these are just outlines. This little heart is super cute for Valentine's Day coming up. Then you have your little flower, and you can see that I've saved several different letters and designs in IQ Designer from my embroidery side. So I'm going to select the letter B. I guess I've used this before as a demo. You could also select your hoop size. Maybe you want to work within a particular hoop size. You want to fill a stippling design in, say, an 8-inch square hoop. You could select that 8-inch square hoop, and it will put, like, a border around your design. It is a non-stitching border, but it will confine your stitching within that area. Okay? So we're going to go back to our little flower. We're going to choose the letter B and touch OK. So now then, if I wanted to make this into an applique, I would need to do some things to it, right? I need to add some stitches. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to change my zigzag stitch. I'm going to change it to a run stitch. I'm sorry if I changed sides on you. 
going to change it to, let's say, purple. Now, remember the pencil? The pencil draws lines, kind of like the brush does. We don't want to draw lines. Or if, if you touch it and you think it's going to give you something, it's just putting little dots on the screen. So we're going to undo and get rid of that line. And we're going to choose the bucket. When you select the bucket and you touch on your outline, let me zoom in a little bit. Too much. There we go. And you touch on the outline, it's going to change those colors. Okay, so let me go back to maybe a green will be brighter so you can see it. Green, green. Hopefully you can see that a little bit better. All right, so now then I'm going to leave this design in the size that it is, but I want to save it because now that is my running stitch outline for my placement of my design. So at the very bottom of the screen, I'm going to touch memory and just save it to either my machine, my USB stick, either one or an SD card. So I'm going to touch memory to save to my USB stick and where it saves it, it saves it into a B pocket on your USB. So you just have your USB plugged into the side of your machine or you could also use um, USB extenders and just have it plugged in that way. Okay, so there's my outline. I'm going to go ahead and touch next and I'm going to leave this as the defaults. Now there are three elements here so I could touch and select each individual element if I needed to, to change the properties. If I wanted to make the stitches longer or make one a satin stitch, you could make those longer or however you want to adjust them. If you want to adjust all three properties at the same time, you'll touch the little chain link button. So I'm going to touch the chain link. And if you're just now tuned in, I'm showing the Baby Lock Solaris 2, a fabulous sewing and embroidery combination machine. And you'll see me on screen here in just a minute. So now I've got red boxes around each of the parts of the design, and now I could actually change them to a satin stitch, a decorative stitch, a little um, blanket stitch, or chain stitch, any of these di different stitches. If I wanted to change the color, I could change the color, okay? Now then, I like it just how it is. We're going to go ahead and touch set and touch OK. Now then, here's the first part of my applique. Now let's watch and see what happens when I do it the stitch out. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, this one, make it bigger. There we go. So when I stitch it out, you will you may be able to see it, you may not, but it's going to start stitching. It's going to stitch around and then it's coming back. Then it's going to stitch around and back, stitch around and back. So what it does is it stitches each outline twice. So what you could do if you're stitching this as an applique, you could use this particular color as your placement and tack down, or you could touch close, you could edit, um, copy paste, and then line that one right back up on top of the first one. Okay, so now I've got two designs stacked on top of each other. And give me just a second, I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to change the color of the second one, so now it's pink. So when you stitch this, we're going to add a satin stitch in just a second. So when you stitch it, you're going to have the green is going to stitch around and back, the, the round and back, around and back. That's going to give you your placement. And many times what I will do, rather than stitching a second color like I've added in the pink, I will use that first color because it does stitch around and back. When it stitches around, when it gets close to the beginning, I'll touch stop, use my scissor button to cut the threads, place my applique fabric, and then let it finish stitching that color. Or stitch it, you know, let it finish once, stitch it again. Because adding a second color is very easy kind of unnecessary at times but because that first color gives you that double run so that's why I say you don't necessarily need it just know that you would need to stop and restitch that color to place your second one so now if we needed a satin stitch on top of this let's touch return we'll touch add we're going to go back into IQ designer we're going to retrieve that design from memory we're going to use the little pocket up here at the top we're going to go into our USB. You can see it's saved into the B pocket. There's my B. Touch OK. Now then it's still set at the same setting. So I'm going to go into my line properties. I'm going to let this one be a cute little candle wicking stitch. And let's make it be um, orange. Just so you'll be able to see it on the screen. We're going to touch the paint bucket. 
We're going to tap on the outlines and then we'll walk it on through. Now with this one, if you wanted to adjust the settings, you could. You can work in inches or millimeters. Right now, this is in um, inches. So I'm going to go up to the top. It looks like a sheet of paper at the very top. And I'm going to go to page number nine and change it to millimeters. Because with millimeters, I can very easily see that's a four millimeter size candle wicking stitch. I'm going to bump it up to about a five. You could also adjust the spacing in between them. So maybe you want to place like a little crystal right in between. A 10SS crystal is about three millimeters. So I'm going to bump that up to about 3.2 to give me a little space in between each one. But if you'll notice, look what happened. So my inner shapes are still very small and very tight together. But my outer shape is larger. And that happened because I didn't touch the chain link button. So if I wanted them to be the same, I would need to have touched the chain link button. So now what I'll do is chain link everything. I'll bump them up to five. Touch OK. And I'll bump this one up to 3.2. And now it will adjust everything on there. Now if you don't want to put any crystals in the middle of it, you leave them tight, close together. Leave a little bit of space. I think the default was like one. Touch OK. And now then, that's going to give you nice little coverage around your applique shape. Then we'll touch set, touch OK, and there's your applique letter. You have your placement, you have your tack down, and you have your finishing stitch. Your placement could be used as dual purpose, but for this one I actually added in two colors. Okay, then go to embroidery and you're ready to stitch. How quick and easy was that? We just turned, what was it, a 46 minute outline? A fill stitch design into a 10 minute applique design. So it makes it very quick, very easy to change so you don't have quite so much stitch time into, into your machine. Because you know, especially if you um, do this for, you know, whether you do it for friends and family or as a business, you know, time is money. We got, we got so many things to do now. So um, hopefully that answered some questions there. So let's touch home and see what we might have missed. We went into embroidery, went into IQ Designer. Let's see if there's anything else. Also in embroidery, we have little frames and we have 10 different shapes of frames with 14 different outlines types. And these are great if you need just a simple, quick um, monogram frame around something, or maybe you've kind of messed up a design, you wanna add a little frame around it so you can make it into a patch. These frames are great that way. You simply choose your shape, you choose your outline type, you touch set, resize it however big you need it and it's ready to go all right so then we also have decorative fill stitches uh, big buttonholes decorative stitches to go around the buttonholes and then we have some decorative fill stitches when you select that these are the ones that are built into the sewing machine side some of them are very hard to keep straight as you're stitching no matter the machine you have because what happens is the stitches they're moving stitches. They're, they move side to side and up and down. So sometimes they're very hard to keep straight. But when you stitch them in the embroidery machine, they're very easy. Like these, the on the Solaris, it's like 48, 49, all the way up to like a 53, 54, maybe even 56. These are big designs. So they're kind of hard to keep straight sometimes. So you have some satin stitch designs that are super cute. And I love stitching these in the embroidery machine because it makes it so much easier. Okay, You can just fill up a whole little area with your decorative stitches. There's also some cute little sparkles in here that I think they put them in the machine just for me. So see little sparkle stitches? But So these are decorative sewing stitches. You've got needle and thread. You've got a little pin cushion. You've got little um, dress forms. All kinds of fun ones. I'll show you some here in just a second. Okay, then you have your quilt sashing. Oh, let me clear out the screen because it can't be combined with anything else. Um, return. Oh, I locked the screen. That's why it wouldn't go away. That's what happens when you lock the screen. So your quilt sashing, your quilt borders. We have in the straight borders, we have 20 different line types that are just single color. In tab number two, we have five that are multiple colors. And then tab number three is your hexagon borders. So you could use these to stitch around those cute little 65 degree table runners and uh, 
table covers, and then this one can be used for your quilts, your placemats, your whatever you want. So when you select it and touch set, it's going to ask you the look that you're after for your type of split that you want to do, whether you just want four quadrants or maybe you're doing a quilt with, you know, all the way out to the corner. So I'm just going to select the four quadrants. Then you would put in your measurements of your size of whatever your project is. Okay. And we're going to go into inches for this one. Fortunately, it's easy to change from inches to millimeters. So you can put in up to a 19.69 um, width to your your quilt and up to 30 this way okay so it's like five feet by 30 I think my numbers may be mixed up there you go oh but then the height of your design can be up to four inches so up to almost 20 inches 20 feet in 20 inches 20 inches in width and because of the design I chose and 30 inches in height so sorry got a little turned around there so if I'm going to change this one, I'm going to put it in as 15 we're going to set it it jumps over here we're going to put that one in as 25 we'll touch set and my border is going to be a three inch size of the design then when we touch next it's going to walk me through splitting that okay now this one is is the what what i say 20 by 30 if we had gone to the other one the other shape that has the corners and stuff that's where you can put in the larger quilt sizes Okay, so it kind of shrinks the designs in a little bit and stretches them out so it'll actually fit within that area. So when you're ready to stitch, you'll touch memory and then you will start the stitching. The data will save the machine's memory, embroider the data. So it's going to start me off. So I'll select my design, touch the one to start with, touch set, and begin your embroidery from there. So, and it kind of walks you through it. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward and pretty simple how to use it. Okay. And then we have um, your couching. We have some couching designs. These are designed to be used with yarn that they'll couch down and make a really cool texture to your designs. And lots of really fun ones. There's like 40 different couching designs. Okay. Oh, this one's super cute. It's got a little a cake on a pedestal with a little coffee cup next to it. Super cute. So, but lots of really fun things that you can do with the Solaris. And as I said, in IQ Designer, you can do so much. If you're scanning in artwork, up at the top right, you're going to have a little icon that looks like a leaf. And that's what you would use if you wanted to scan in an image, which is the hoop that you have fabric in. A line design would be your outline, uh, like the little flower I showed a while ago, or an illustration, which is a colored in design. So you can scan in any of those to turn your design into stitches. And uh, lots of fun stuff. And even the sewing side. Remove the frame. It's a smart machine. It tells you exactly what to do when you need to do it. So we remove the frame. And now it's going to move into the sewing mode. Okay. So sewing, you got a lot of great features. You still have your projector. You have your guide beam for aligning your stitches. You have the same easy touch and scroll of the stitches um, just as you do in your embroidery. Okay. Tab number eight. I believe is, let me say seven. There's lots of just lots of stitches, lots of fun stuff to stitch. Okay. All right. Any questions coming through? I'm going to turn around to camera and show you some samples here for just a second. So I'm going to block the camera for a split second. I think Jackie's still kind of hanging out with us. I am. I'm still oh, here. You are. I'm actually All right, so I'm learning some. I'm going to turn it over to you, Jackie. How's that? Oh, we can do that. Okay, so as I was showing in the embroidery side, being able to use the decorative stitches, here are some really cute ones. I just picked some of my favorites. These are like the holly leaves, the, the um, birthday cake, and music notes. Let me think about what that is. A little bee. Look at that little hedgehog. Is that not the cutest? Little thread spools, pin cushion, needles, butterflies, little sparkle stitches. And like I said, these are tricky to keep aligned in the sewing side, but they're super easy to keep aligned in the embroidery side. So we also have, um, this is one of my favorite things that I, we've ever stitched out for to show all the different fill patterns on the Solaris and even the Destiny and the Altair, the Meridian, all of the ones that have IQ Designer. If you ever want a sampling of what the different stitches and fill patterns look like, here's a great one. We just made squares and in each size, 
each square is a different size of the fill pattern. So this, the purple in here is the 50% size. The green is the 100% size. And then the blue is the 200% size. So it gives you a really great visual of what the different fill patterns look like. And I just have them stitched out in all of the different fill patterns. And I usually hang them up on the classroom wall when I'm, I'm stitching, you know, letting people choose whichever fill pattern they want to use because it gives them a great visual to see. So um, that's some of the fun things. I also have some cute um, artwork. This is a project that I've used in, um, I, Jackie, we used it in the class we did, the Destination Destiny class. But it's one that's fun that you can use to scan in coloring book artwork to turn into designs. And I know Jackie has a lot of great um, hand embroidered designs at her store as well. And this is actually a hand embroidered design from Oh My Bloomin' Threads. And I scanned it in, changed all the colors because I'm not a quick hand stitcher, but I can certainly let my machine do it. Okay. And then one last one. I know I referenced talking about adding an outline turning it on or off in IQ Designer. And this is the actual design that I wanted to reference and show you. Because these ornaments are actually built into the Solaris. And I'm going to bring it in kind of close because if I had left the outline on, it would have stitched a hard outline around this outer edge right here. Okay, it would have stitched a hard outline around the ornaments. But in order, when I turned it off, it left the outline off and it just kind of makes the stitches blend in better to the stitching. So this is a time where you would want your outline to be turned off for sure. Okay, but this is just a super fun, cute design. So, but anyway, Jackie, take it away. I know you're going to tell us some fun stuff. I hope I haven't bored anybody to death and I've shown them some cool, fun things that they may or may not have known about the Solara. So take it away, Jackie. Thanks, Missy. I, I learned something. It was, it was so exciting. And you know, this machine does everything. But a couple things before I get to the pricing and all that, I want to talk about some little um, things that I really like about the machine. Number one is the never miss needle threader. I actually have it threaded already and I'm gonna have him zoom in right to the needle threader there. And all I have to do is push the button and it threads the needle. As simple as that. And then another thing, if you notice the lighting, how beautiful the lighting is. Also, one of my favorite things on this machine, because you have to clean your bobbin case and everything, is right here, ready? All I'm gonna do, and my plate comes off. As simple as that. Just don't look how dirty, dirty the machine is. <laughs> this is one of the ones we use on it. So those are a couple of extra features that I love about the machine. And what Missy told you guys, it's awesome. There's so much you can do with the machine and so forth. It's great. You also have a couple other things. I keep, there's so much for the machine, is the spool thing, which is great because you can Clip it down, basically tuck it away, or you can use it, just leave it on your machine all the time on that there. And it also has where you can um, wind your bobbin, and you can tell it halfway full or even, you know, just a little bit. If you're just doing some, like, a little bit of stitching, you only need that odd color or something like that. So those are kind of great little features. But today, we have a great package for you. So I'm going to put up on a slide. I got to get my clicker. <laughs> there you go. So on the Baby Lock Solaris, um, Baby Lock does not allow us to um, put prices out. So you have to call the store for details. But right now we have a Baby Lock Solaris bundle. And the bundle includes Palette 11, which is the digitizing software. Plus, one thing we didn't mention, Missy, is it's wireless. So we can actually talk to our computer to our machines if I want to send designs over through Palette. I also have a trolley, inspirational guide, needles, hoop, a starter bundle. It's a great bundle with your new Slayers too. So we have some great deal on it. So like I said, give us a call at 1-877-242-6282. And just hit extension three. Like I said, if you have to leave a message, Give us some details, what machine you're using, what you're looking for on that. 
Plus, we have 0% financing available, which is great. Or if you don't finance, well, we have additional savings on that too. So it's awesome. It's great. It's exciting. But you know what? There's even more. We're going to go back to Missy and talk about the Baby Lock Triumph Serger. It's back to you, Missy. Thanks, Jackie. So exciting. So I've kind of switched positions in my sewing room and now I'm sitting in front of the Baby Lock Triumph. I'm not going to take quite as long on the Triumph as I did on the Serger. And Jackie pointed out some great features. You know, it's those kind of features that we as educators, we kind of tend to forget sometimes because the machine does so many things. And it's the little things. It's the popping off the bobbin cover when you need to clean it out. It's the, you know, the never miss needle threading, the, you know, the stadium lighting. It's just there's so much that they do nowadays. It's just amazing. We can never remember all of it, especially when we're trying to cram so much information in. So what I wanted to touch on just a little bit is the Baby Lock Triumph Serger. It is my other top of the line favorite machine. I'm kind of a top of the line girl, if y'all know me. And the Triumph is amazing. It is Baby Lock's eight thread serger, the top of the line. There are other versions that are um, a step down from the Triumph. But the Triumph came out just a couple of years ago to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Baby Lock Sergers. And it is your eight thread machine. It will do your four thread cover stitch, which is a three needles and one looper. It will also do your four thread overlock stitches, which your overlock stitches are your seaming stitches. You could also use the cover and chain stitch for your seaming, but um, generally the overlock stitches is what is used for that. So um, you can also combine the stitches. Maybe you want to do that five thread safety stitch that is the garment industry standard. You could actually set for a chain stitch, which is two threads, and then your three thread overlock, which would bring you up to the five threads safety, safety stitch of the garments industry. So I'm going to turn you around just a little bit and show you some of the fun things that I love about the Triumph, and then I'm going to send it back to Jackie and let her close it out. But if you've never used a serger before, don't be intimidated, okay? Because the Triumph is amazing. Baby Lock has the easiest surges in the world to thread and no tensions, no fussing with all that stuff. It's just, it's pretty amazing. I was never really a serger girl, but once I started using one, I probably use my serger probably 95% of the time over my sewing machine because it does so much. So I'm gonna turn you to the machine. I'm gonna show you some fun stuff and then we're going to um, kind of wrap up again in just a little bit, I think. All right, so turn you right here, and hopefully you're seeing that okay. I'm going to bring you in just a little bit closer. And next time we do this, Jackie, I'll have to figure out that turning the camera around. That's kind of a trick to me, but we'll figure it out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut my threads. And what we have on the Baby Lock Sergers is your automatic needle threading. And we also have automatic tensions. So we have an automatic thread delivery system which measures the type of thread you're using and the type of fabric you're stitching on to give you the perfect stitch every time. So whether you're using a sulky 12 weight thread or a di different thicker decorative thread or just your regular serger thread, it's gonna adjust all of that for you depending on what kind of fabric you're using so you have a beautiful stitch every single time. Okay, so I've got my four threads overlock snapped into position here. I'm just going to bring the threads down. If you're new to Baby Lock Machines, you know that we have your automatic threading. So we have push button threading with the, the Triumph. It's the Revolutionaire threading, which, mean, which means the Revolutionaire has the push button for the motor. There's Extraordinaire. There's Jet Air. All of what that means is it's a push of a button to thread your loopers. The loopers are typically the trickiest part of the machine to thread, right? So I'm going to um, change from surging down to threading, lock my loopers in position, and I'm going to take the thread tail and I'm going to put it into the threading port. These little ports, they say do not oil. They mean it. They're for threading. They're not for oil. So I'm going to put my upper looper in as well. Now when I push the button right over here on the right hand side where it says push to thread the loopers, we'll push. And now then there's my upper looper thread, which sometimes you have to stand on top of your head to thread. And there's my lower looper thread. Both of them threaded with just the push of a button. Now if you've ever tried it and it your thread doesn't 
come all the way out you probably don't have enough thread pulled down so anytime you're threading you need to have about 18 inches of thread or so pulled down so there's enough thread to go through the working mechanism of the machine especially the triumph and even the ovation because you got an additional five inches of space right here to the right of the needle which is fabulous for decorative work but when you're threading you need just a little bit extra thread to go through all the working spots okay so that five inches of space right there is awesome so we're going to take our needle thread over up and around don't forget your take up lever right here on the front up and around behind the threading guide and now i know i'm not going to be able to get super close on this next part but oh my gosh, you guys, years ago, people would always say, well, we need a threader on our machines. We need a threader. And I would always say, well, there's really not enough room. It would take a whole remanufacturing of the machine to add in a needle threader. Well, you guys, they've done it. They've added in a needle threader, which is incredible. So I'm going to make sure it's on my overlock stitches. And I've brought my threading down. My loopers are still engaged, which means they're in locked position, but I could actually raise them up. They don't have to be completely locked. They just have to be in that right position. So I'm going to, over here on the left hand side, I'm going to drop my needle threader down. And then I'm going to hold my thread tail up to the eye of my needle. If I cut my thread tails to the end of the bed, right here. I don't have to leave a bunch of length there. I'm going to come to the end of the bed and now I'm going to hold this thread tail up to the eye of the needle as I push the button. And as it as I push the button, it's going to suck it right through that hole. Okay, there's one. I don't have to raise it up, but I want you to see that that first one is threaded. I'm going to drop it back down and we're going to go ahead and do the second one as well. And there's the second one. Now, when it brings it back up, since I cut it to the edge of the bed, it brings it up and it catches. You can just leave it there when you start stitching because then it will begin, it'll start pulling it back as you stitch and you won't have to worry about it. So I'll go ahead and close up the doors, change from th th bleh, threading up to serging, close the doors, and we're ready to stitch. Over here on the right hand side, I do have two needles in, which those two needles, I want to be sure that my stitch selector is on A for my left needle and right needle. So I'm on stitch selector A on the right hand side. My differential feed, which is right down here on the lower right hand side, that is what you would use if you're going to be gathering in or easing in stitch and in, in fabrics. And then as you come across the front, we have our wave and overlock selector. We do have a fabulous wave stitch on the baby lock sergers that is exclusive to the, our sergers. And it looks like a rickrack stitch. I'll pull a sample or show you a sample on the wall here in just a second that's got the wave stitch in it. But it's a lot of fun. We do have a little bit of tension just on our chain and cover stitch. The chain looper tension's here. The chain needle tension is over here on the left-hand side. Then as you come across the front, we have a speed control. Okay, This speed control is great, especially if you are a new surgeon. You want to start in the mid-range because the sergers stitch at about 1,500 stitches per minute, which is pretty quick. So if you're not used to it, you want to be able to slow that down. Okay, so we're going to put our speed control right here in the mid-range. Um, we, like I said, are five inches of space to the right of the needle. We also have a knee lift. I know when Jackie comes back in, you'll be able to see the knee lift that she has on her Triumph that's on display. Um, I don't always keep mine on because I'm always moving my machine around, but it's fabulous. I didn't think I would ever get used to a knee lift because I'm not a fan of a knee lift on a sewing machine, but I love it on my serger. I do. Okay, so I'm going to bring a little piece of fabric in. And we're just going to run a little stitch. This, I always test my stitches before I begin any new seam because you never know if something is just not in the right spot if you need to check your stitches or your settings. Right here on the front, these two dials right here, we have our width of our stitch, which is the amount of fabric that's going to be left after we've stitched our seam. And then the bottom is going to be our stitch length. So one to four is our stitch length of a standard setting and also of our uh, rolled hem setting. So I'll show you a rolled hem here in just a second because it's super, super easy. All right, so we're stitch length of about three. Our stitch width is on M. If I bring it all the way back to that 5.5, if you're a quilter, you're going to love it because it's the perfect width 
for making quilt blocks, which is what I've done here. This is just a super quick bow tie quilt block. Um, three seams, and you have a cute little quilt block to make on the serger. Okay, so as we stitch, it's going to trim off our excess fabric. And you're going to chain off about four inches, and on the right hand side, sorry, the left hand side, there's a cutter. So I'm going to cut off some of my extra thread tails here and get rid of them. That's my starting thread tails. But there is my seam. That was one tucked up in the back. But there's my beautiful seam. Quick and easy serging seams. Okay. If I wanted to gather this, maybe I wanted to make this into a little skirt. The change of two things can help you gather. Your length, turn it to four, so which is all the way towards you to make it as long as it'll go. Your differential feed over on the right hand side, bump it all the way to the top to two, and now that's gonna gather. So as we stitch, it's gonna pull that fabric in. To make a cute little ruffle. Now then, if you'll notice, I cut that instead of pulling the thread off because now what happens, if that's not enough gathers for you, you could then come in and grab your thread chains and you probably won't be able to see it, but just in case, those thread chains, you might be able to see there's two that are going straight up and down then the other two are going side to side. If you'll pull those two that are going straight up and down, you can actually gather that in better. So if, I'm, if I pull this all the way out, look what happens. See, I've got two threads still in my fingers, but I've got two little threads right here as well. So if I grab those two shorty threads, those are my needle threads. I'm going to pull the shorties, and now I can gather that up just as much as I want. I do most of my gathering by serger because it's one seam, two needle threads, quick and easy to gather, whether it's a skirt, a sleeve, um, decorative ruching or puffing or whatever. The gathering is amazing on your serger. Okay, so now then what if we wanted to do a rolled hem? Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of stitching on just the, the overlock side, but then I'll talk to you about what you can do on the cover stitch side. So I'm going to take out my left needle thread and my left needle so I'm going to just put it in, drop it out, raise your presser foot up, and there we go. Okay, so I've taken out my left needle, and I've taken off my left needle thread. And now I'm going to set for a rolled hem. So on the right-hand side, I'm going to drop my stitch selector down to D, and my differential feed, I'm going to put it back to N, which is two notches up from the bottom. Differential feed on N, stitch selector on D. My stitch length, I'm going to turn my dial so it's a number with a ring around it. So probably about a one and a half or two with a ring around it. And my stitch width on M. M is going to give me a perfect, beautiful rolled hem. Now, a rolled hem on a cotton fabric is different than a rolled hem on like a sheer chiffon scarf type fabric. You may need to widen the width on that to roll more fabric into the seam so it doesn't pull off the edge very easy. So depends on the fabric you're using, but the M is usually a pretty good setting to start with. So I'm going to slide my fabric under. I'm going to let it cut off a little bit because the blade is there for a reason to cut your fabrics. Now if you're quilting, you don't want to cut your fabrics. You want it butted up right next to the blade. And then as you stitch, There's your beautiful little rolled hem. So if you like to make napkins for all the holidays or you want to make some beautiful scarves quick and easy, the rolled hem is the way to go. Add a decorative thread to the upper looper for your rolled hem because the upper looper is what wraps to the back and shows the beautiful stitch. Okay, so add a decorative thread, whether it's a, like a, a poly woolly nylon or a poly yarn or an arrow flock. Um, different brands of threads have different um, types of fluffy threads, and I know Jackie sells several different types of threads, but even your decorative 12 weight threads, your 30 weights, they, they would be beautiful as well for a rolled hem. So, but that's 
kind of a little bit about what your serger can do. I didn't even really touch on the cover stitch. So the threading over here on the right is your overlock stitching. The threading over here on the left is for your cover stitch. And if you think about your cover stitch, your cover stitch is great for a lot of decorative work, but it's also what, it's like what your t-shirts are hemmed with. Like this knit t-shirt here, it has a two thread needles on the top and then your looper on the bottom. So it's a three thread narrow cover stitch. So what you would do is you would open the doors. This door comes off. You would lock down your upper looper. Turn your hand wheel to lock it down. Lock down your cutting blade. And then once you have that all locked down, you can put on a flatbed table, change your needles, and now you're kind of set up for a sewing machine, but it's actually a cover and chain stitch. And you can do a lot of decorative fun work with it. That five inches of space is amazing for doing the decorative stitching on your, your cover stitch. Okay, so a lot of fun things that you can do with your serger. You can play with all different types of thread, different types of fabrics. There's all kinds of um, great things that you can do. Sergers are not what they used to be. Sergers nowadays, they are, they've always been workhorses, but now they're like decorative workhorses too. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of inspiration about what you can do with your serger. And it's been so much fun for me to be here joining y'all today. I'm Missy Billingsley. I'm a baby lock educator. And um, I've been to Jackie's store many times. I have a group where I do videos in as well. So um, I would love to have you in the group. I'd love to see you next time in Phoenix I'm teaching. So take it away, Jackie. Thank you. Thanks, Missy. It was awesome. I'm so inspired. It's so great to see you, even though it was virtual, but it was great to see you. And thanks for doing all this, because I'm sure they are just so, their mind is just, ooh, on it. So, uh, of course, we have a special on the Triumph. So, let's talk about that special on that slide there. I got to get my clicker. All right. So, the Triumph, again, this is something we can't show on um, online, but we do have a special offer on the Triumph, and we do take trade-ins. So, again, call the store. But it kind of, we have a serger bundle available. This is a 29 um, foot kit. And I'm gonna kind of open this. Hopefully I don't drop anything out of it. But this is amazing, 29 feet. That's a lot of feet, ready? The different feet, look at that. You have your binders, your double fold binders, your clear foot, your bias binders, your fabric guide, 29 feet, which is in the bundle. So we have 29 feet inspirational guide, plus we have 60 day love of knowledge. That is free online classes for that. I gotta zip that back up. And it comes in this new little baby lock um, little bag. So again, we have a great price. We have 0% financing available, plus you get the 29 feet kit, the inspirational guide, the 60 day love of knowledge, plus again, like we have said throughout this sewing uh, machine expo, is we, um, we do free classes in store, and we are doing in store classes right now for our user classes. So if you buy a machine from us and you're local, you can come into the store and get your free user class. And we're doing one on one, of course. We require masks, of course. So um, you can get your going on your thing. Plus, hopefully, soon we'll be doing all our serger clubs, our embroidery clubs, our OESD clubs. We have tons of classes. So to kind of keep you going with your machine. So let's go on a couple. She's mentioned a little other machines. I just want to go over another machine before we kind of wrap this up. The next machine I want to talk about is the Alt Tear, which we are going to go over here. So this machine here is a step down from the Solaris. And with this machine is, it's kind of what replaced the Destiny. Um, a lot of the features she talked about in the Solaris, you know, like the, um, IQ designer, things like that, that's still in this machine. But it does not have the scanning mode. It actually uses an app from your phone. So if I wanted to, um, on the Solaris, you scan this to um, place your design. I put a little mark there. Normally I wouldn't use a pen, but that's what I had handy. But this hoop, if I wanted to basically place a design dead center in there, I would use the app on my phone, which is um, your IQ intuition. And what I would do is, you're not going to be able to see this because I have to hold it upright, but I actually go to the app on my phone and I'm going to actually choose a design first on the screen. 
And let's do, oh, Easter's coming. Let's do a little Easter bunny. So I'm going to set that guy on the screen, and I want to see what my hoop looks like. So what I'm going to do is go to my app on my phone and go over my hoop, which is okay. And it basically scanned my hoop, and it says send to the machine. And I'm going to send it to the machine. And on the machine, it says this image was sent to the, um, from a mobile device. Do you want to update? And I say OK. And it says attach frame. Again, like Missy was saying, the machines are smart. They tell you what to do. So I'm just saying slide on that frame and press OK. And it'll say my carriage is moving. So basically, on the screen now, it's actually showing the hoop. And I'm going to move the little design out of the way. See my little mark with my pen is there. So I can go, if we go closer to the screen, maybe, there we go. <laughs> See the little mark there? So basically, I took a picture with my phone, and I say if I wanted that mark right between the errors, I can do that. So that's what the Altair has. Instead of the scanning capability, it has where you can use an app on your phone to basically line things up, which is great. So this one I have some really great deals on also, and we're going to hit the slide on that one. That kind of gives you a little extra little thing. So the Baby Lock Altair, actually the Expo price right now is $79.99, and you have two options on this. You have option one, which is a Baby Lock bundle, which is a Palette 11 software, stabilizer kit, inspirational guide, gift box, and needles, or with this low price of $79.99, you can get option one, or you can do option two, which is 0% financing for 60 months. So that's a great deal. So you have an offer of either one, whichever one you prefer. So again, this is kind of what replaced, if you know the Destiny, it's kind of replaced what the Destiny was. Um, but it has some really great features, embroidery sewing, and everything like that. So the next one I want to show you on the screen is the um, Pathfinder. And this one is, if you are starting to embroider and you wanted a um, basic embroidery machine to start, this is kind of their introduction embroidery only machine. And this one runs $39.99. So if, someone, if you have a great machine, like if you have the Crescendo or the Aria or even the Soprano, and you wanted just the embroidery machine to get, to, um, get yourself into embroidery, this would be a great machine. This normally runs $64.99. Expo price is $39.99. Three nine, I can't talk, 3999 and it has a free star kit, threads, and stabilizer. So again, a great deal, plus you have 0% financing on it available. So I think that's pretty much all our machines we're going to show today. Join us tomorrow with Denise from Baby Lock. Um, she's going to do overall their quilting machines. But don't forget, um, to win prizes, you have to share us, like us, you know, um, Tell everyone about us. That's basically what you do, and you'll be entered to win on prizes and so forth. And again, give us a call if you have questions. We're here all day today. Um, if you want to come, put your hands on the machines. Um, thank you for coming, and thanks again to Missy.